We are here today to talk to you about meatless freezer meals. We're sharing some of our best, newest meatless recipes and these are so flavorful. Whether you are vegetarian, exploring just eating a little less meat, or for budget or health reasons wanting to do a meatless Monday every week, this is for you. family of meat eaters. We are omnivores at our house, but since I've met Sharla, we have started to eat a little bit more vegetarian simply because she's the one who makes the recipes and I'm the one who eats them. It's been really good. Even my husband is, you know, this is really good and it's filling, it's long lasting, and I know that it's healthy. It is really good to have these in your repertoire. And some of the ones that we've been experimenting with are pretty exciting. So let's jump to the first recipe that we're making today. It is a garden vegetable spaghetti sauce. Now I love pasta, so I'm always looking for new pasta recipes. We've got a great spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. And when we make it, we make it for Christy's family with real ground beef. And for my family, we use a veggie beef alternative. So I'm still able to eat that. However, one of the things that I've kind of been on the search for is something that's a little bit fresher and brighter. And this garden vegetable spaghetti sauce is just that. We're packing a lot of vegetables in here, a lot of nutrients and goodness. And of course, I love it when there's color because it makes me feel like it's healthy. <laughs> so into your freezer bag, you're going to add some chopped spinach, diced carrot, zucchini that's diced, sliced mushrooms, diced onion, diced red pepper, minced garlic, we just use garlic from a jar because it's faster, some diced tomatoes from a can, oregano, basil, parsley, thyme, salt, pepper, and a little splash of those red pepper flakes. You're going to mix this all together in the bag so that you get to see all those beautiful colors. And then you're going to get out as much air as you can because when you're freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn and we always avoid that as much as we can. Then you're going to seal this, get it into your freezer and on the day you go to make this, you can cook it in your slow cooker or on your stove top. Now you have two options when it comes to this sauce. You can serve it as is right on top of your spaghetti or any other kind of pasta, or you can run an immersion blender through it and then serve it on top of your pasta. The reason you might wanna opt for the latter is if you have kids or husband or wife who are picky, <laughs> or a friend, <laughs> then if you run that immersion blender through it, they'll never need to know that there are eight vegetables in here and that they are eating much healthier than they think they are. <laughs> you tricky. <laughs> you know, when one of our daughters was younger, the only way I could get her to eat vegetables or fruit was she could eat um, pumpkin muffins, zucchini mm -hmm. cake or loaf, those kind of things. If I put butterscotch chippets in the pumpkin muffins, then she was more likely, more likely to, to eat, eat them. them. And for one really strange season when she was about seven years old, she would nibble on carrots if she was wearing a bunny costume. <gasps> So she wore a bunny costume pretty much every day? That she is wore... so super cute. <laughs> it was adorable. Oh my, that is adorable. And so as she was pretending to be a bunny, we could get her to eat carrots. <laughs> Did you tell her that bunnies ate lettuce and apples and other things too? Oh, we that's sure so adorable. Tried. And we were thinking maybe, you know, a horse costume might get her to eat like an apple, but no. That is funny. And she's a full grown woman now and still hates vegetables. So, you know, sometimes 
you just are what you are and if you're picky you're picky but um, this is a really flavorful great way to get your vegetables in for sure these lasagna roll-ups are healthy and very pretty this is something that you could serve to company absolutely they're beautiful and they feel a little bit fancy. They do feel a little bit fancy. And this one is a little bit of a time consuming recipe, but if you are serving it to company, you did all the work today. So on the day you're serving company, you really just have to thaw it and cook it. You're not doing all that extra work. And um, you might have to, what was the old Rice Krispies squares ad where she, the, the mom would sprinkle powder on her face and she walked by the fishbowl so she sprinkled her face with water so she looked like she worked really hard this is one of those recipes where it really isn't a lot of extra work because you did the work today so to start out you are going to cook up your lasagna noodles now you are going to want to undercook them just a little bit because they're going to end up back in the oven and they're going to keep cooking and we don't want our pasta to be mushy so the filling of this is really really nice to put together we're going to start out with our frozen chopped spinach that we have drained and thawed we are going to add in some ricotta cheese and mix together we're going to add in some mozzarella cheese that's been shredded some minced onion some minced garlic some salt and pepper some Parmesan cheese, and the secret ingredient is a little bit of nutmeg. We're going to mix that as completely as we can, and then we're going to go on to our sauce. Our sauce is made of crushed tomatoes, fire roasted tomatoes, and a lot of basil. Mix that together, and then we are going to lay the sauce, about a cup of it. We're gonna layer it into the bottom of our pan, then take an individual lasagna noodle, I was storing mine in some cool water to keep them loose, so I blotted mine dry, otherwise they get a little slippery to roll. We add a thin layer of the spinach and ricotta mixture, and then we roll it from one end to the other, so it's a beautiful little spiral. We're going to lay it nicely into our pan and go on to the next one. We just went until we ran out of filling, so if you wanted to double this and keep on going, you certainly could. Then we're going to take some more of that sauce, and scoop it on top of each of those individual bundles. We're going to cover it with foil and get it into our freezer. On the day of cooking, you're going to let it thaw and just bake it in your oven. Maybe make some garlic bread with a little bit of Caesar salad and you have a wonderful supper here. This really is one that you could serve for company. And if you're going to be doing all the work of rolling these and you know making your filling and making your sauce and whatever, then it probably just is wise to double the recipe, maybe have one for dinner tonight and get the other one in your freezer for next week. Like Christy was saying, future you will thank today you because they're done and they're delicious. Now this mulligatawny soup Oh my goodness, we made it at our last freezer meal mega session. For those of you new to our channel, once every, Christy and our neighbors, and once every three months for the last over 12 years, we've been getting together and making enough meals to last both of our families for the next three months. So we made 156 at that session. I will pop that video up there and in the description down below. Now, <laughs> this soup was one of those things where I only made two of them, one for our house mm -hmm. and one for Christy's house, because it was a brand new recipe. I was inventing it and I was looking at different ideas online and I was looking in cookbooks and, you know, kind of amalgamating and I wasn't sure how good it would be. Right. But very shortly after <laughs> we did that mega session, we actually made it again and froze more of it. And that time I did individual portions because I wanted them for my lunches, like selfishly. <laughs> and I fully cooked them that time before freezing so that I could just reheat them for a quick lunch. And it has been super popular already with my family. My family does like things a little spicier, so when I made the second batch, I did make it. <laughs> I kicked it up a bit. Yeah, if you're looking for a flavorful vegetarian meal, this is it. Into your large freezer bag, you're going to add a chopped onion, peeled and diced carrot, jalapeno that's seeded and diced, 
You can add more or less depending on your spice tolerance. Some minced garlic, again from the jar. Some minced ginger from a squeezy tube. Granny Smith apples that are cored and diced, but you can go ahead and leave the peel on. Diced tomatoes, curry powder, cumin, paprika, cinnamon, turmeric, cardamom, thyme, and red lentils along with some salt and pepper. You're going to get as much air as you can out of that bag and you're going to seal it and get it in your freezer. We always add our vegetable broth on the day of cooking because otherwise your bags get thicker and when you're making a lot of meals at one time, you want the thinnest bags possible, but you can add the vegetable broth right as you're making it if you prefer. On the day that you go to make this, you're going to thaw it and then simmer it in a large stovetop pot. You are going to add the vegetable broth to that, of course, and after it's all cooked and softened, then you're gonna run an immersion blender through it, and then you're going to add some coconut milk. It's going to be so nice and creamy, if you want to get fancy with it, you could sprinkle some cilantro on here or a little dollop of sour cream or heavy cream and you could serve this with naan bread. It is really, really good and this was a totally new soup to me because I've dreamt about mulligatani since I was a little girl because I remember reading about it in a cook, or it wasn't a cookbook, it was a children's book. I want to say it was something like Peter Rabbit where the mom served mulligatani soup to the kids and the word mulligatani was just so exciting that I'm like, I have to eat that someday. And so when Charlotte put it on our docket to try it for the mega session, I didn't even know it was soup. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what it is. I just need to eat the mulligatani and it delivers. It is really good. <laughs> and I have a friend that worked at a fishing camp for mm -hmm. a summer, like away on an, on an island. And she said that the chef made mulligatani stew with fish mm. that was fresh caught. And she just loved the flavors of that. And so she has actually tried my mulligatani and agreed that it is those same flavors and tastes, you know, just like the memory that she has of that mulligatani stew. So there you go, our mulligatani soup, which is now been perfected and it is on our way to the Freezer Meals 101 Club. This recipe is vegetarian chili, which again is really, really lovely. It is filling and it is flavorful. In our bag, we're going to add a can of crushed tomatoes, some diced tomatoes, some kidney beans. You don't have to rinse these because we want that extra goodness in the can into the chili. We're going to add in some corn. It can be frozen or from a can. Some celery, unless you're allergic like Sharla, so then you skip the celery. <laughs> a diced red pepper, a diced yellow pepper, diced onion, minced garlic, carrots that are peeled and very thinly sliced, some cumin, chili powder, some salt, and a bit of chili flakes. Unless you're Charlotte and then you add more chili flakes. <laughs> you're gonna mix this all around in your bag, which is really great because you are skipping the bowl. You don't have to dirty another dish to make this recipe. You're going to get out that excess air, seal up your bag, and get it into your freezer. On the day of cooking, you're going to thaw it, you're going to simmer it on your stove for about an hour, or you can do it in your slow cooker for three hours on high or five hours on low and you want to serve this, you can top it with sour cream, some grated cheese, some fresh cilantro, or some diced avocado, or some chopped onions, or all of the above. This one is one of those ones where it would be really good like after a day of skiing, mm -hmm. or tobogganing, you can tell it's winter. <laughs> <laughs> I would serve this on like an open-faced bun and just get that extra goodness sopping up into the bread. Yeah. That would be really, really great. An exciting new to us recipe is our pineapple fried rice. I did take some inspiration from our chicken fried rice because that's my Tancha my aunt's 
recipe and it's just so good and full of childhood nostalgia for me. So this one is a little bit, yeah, we did use some of the same ingredients in this and took inspiration from that, but it's a bit of a departure. So for this pineapple fried rice, you're going to actually prep your rice ahead of time. You're gonna cook it and cool it. When you're freezer cooking, you only wanna work with cooled ingredients because otherwise you're gonna get condensation in your bags or containers and that can lead to some freezer burn and ice crystals and all of those things. So we like to prep the ingredients even a day ahead. It also makes the assembly so much faster. Mm -hmm. But for this, you're take, gonna take your cooked cooled rice, add it into your bowl and then you're going to add some minced garlic, minced onion, diced red pepper, frozen peas, a can of drained pineapple chunks, some sliced green onions, and then here's where we get the inspiration from my Tan Giselle's chicken fried rice. We're gonna add some oyster sauce and low sodium soy sauce. Then we're going to add some chili garlic sauce or sriracha just to kick it up a little bit. And then if you want, you can add some raw unsalted cashews to give it a little bit of extra protein. Either way, once you've got that sealed up in your freezer on the day you go to make this, you thaw it and then you can cook it up in a skillet or a wok so that you can get a little bit of extra crispiness on the rice. Or if you needed to, you could heat this in your microwave. You can even heat it in the oven. My preferred method would be skillet or wok just to get that sear. But you know, your rice is already cooked, so this is an easy reheat. This next one is another pretty one. It is the Tex-Mex rice casserole. We are gonna start with our rice in the bag. It has been cooked and cooled, like Sharla said before. We're going to add in a bunch of salsa, some green chilies, some corn, some black beans that have been rinsed and drained, some cilantro. I think cilantro is one of those things you can measure with your heart, so you just go right ahead. Add in some cumin, some chili powder, salt and pepper, we're going to add in some diced tomatoes that have been drained. We're also going to add in some cheddar cheese and some mozzarella. We're going to mix that all around, either in a big bowl or if you can make it right in your bag, you go right ahead and do that. You're going to get it into your bag, remove the excess air and seal it. And then in a medium size, quart size bag, you're going to add extra mozzarella cheese and more cheddar cheese into that bag, seal it up and then staple the bags together. So once you freeze it and thaw it on the day of cooking, you can add the contents of the large bag to a casserole dish and then you can top it with that extra cheese. You're going to bake this in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes and enjoy. And I think cheese is also something that you can measure with your heart. And um, this would be also good like I would probably want to serve it with maybe some sour cream or some crumpled up taco chips. Oh, that would totally work. Yeah. And because, again, your rice is already cooked, this is one that you could mix together in a bowl and then portion out into mm -hmm. individual portions. Oh, yeah. And just top each one with the cheese and microwave it. And we've actually done that before in another video. <laughs> As it, it totally happens. Works. <laughs> when we were doing individual servings. We so. were on a roll and we just made a bunch. You should check out that video, actually. Yeah, we'll pop that video right up there. And if you have never tried freezer cooking, then we just invite you to give this, like dip your toe in the water. Pick one or two of the recipes from today and double each of them. So make one for dinner tonight and follow the freezer instructions for the other one and get it in your freezer and then just do another one another night and do the same and then a few weeks from now when you go to grab those ones that are pre-made out of your freezer you're going to be so thankful and i wouldn't be surprised if you got hooked 
because this is a little bit like an addiction. It is a little bit of addicting. We have a Facebook group for Freezer Meals 101. There's a link for that down below. You can have a look and you will see people who regularly, you know, catch sales of something, whether it's a protein or just even a case lot sale. And you could get, you know, a, a wicked deal on a case of diced tomatoes, which we use all the time. And they can't help themselves. They have to buy it and then they have to make something with it. And it's like, my freezer is already overflowing, but I couldn't pass the sale up. And that's a great way to save money. It's a great way to save time. It's a great way to save your mental load. And that's probably my favorite part because I don't ever have to think about what to make for dinner because I can just go and pick something from my freezer. That is my favorite part of all of this. Honestly, it's delightful. <laughs> it's like, and if freezer meals are your addiction, that's a good addiction to have, where most are not. But <laughs> there's worse things. <laughs> you know, there's worse things than having your freezer stocked and saving a ton of money and never having to think about what to cook. So, yeah, we had somebody in the group who was, it was a little while back, but they were joking about, like, I think I need an intervention. I'm about <laughs> to buy a second freezer. And we were like, Two is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Charlotte's response was, all the cool kids have two. It made me laugh. It's just kind of a way of life after a while and it is really great. But even people in RVs do it. Oh yeah, we have quite a few people that live in their RV and freezer meals is a way of life for them too. So this is for everybody. We always say that, but it's so true. So just invite you to, again, just dip your toe in the freezer meal waters here. We're gonna pop a video right there to that mega session. So don't start there, but maybe start there with looking for ideas. And we just are so glad you joined us today on our little meatless foray. <laughs> and happy cooking. Bye.